And so you'll go from 150 billion to 1.5 trillion. And when they start issuing uh, in that size, <clears throat> you'll see Amazon and Google and Microsoft using stable coin for international remittance and corporate mm -hmm. remittance. And then you'll see it get built into Apple Pay and Google Pay and Amazon as a payment method, right? And, and then you will actually see billions of people using this stuff instead of hundreds of millions or tens of millions. Though it has been almost a month since the Luna and USD implosion, we are still witnessing its aftermath. Billions of dollars were lost almost overnight during the crash, so it is expected that the crypto industry especially stable coins like the USD, will get more attention than usual during the coming months. Before the crash, there had already been talks about regulating stable coins, but regulators didn't seem really pumped to get the space regulated. However, after the crash, talks of regulations have more than tripled, and not just in the United States. Several other financial regulators have promised to look closely into the space to avoid a repetition of what happened with Terra's algorithmic stable coin. The crypto space has never been one to be particularly fond of regulations, which is not surprising if you look at what the same regulators have done to our fiat currencies. However, market experts like Shark Tank celebrity Kevin O'Leary and MicroStrategy's Michael Saylor are convinced that regulations will do the cryptocurrency industry a lot of good. In a recent interview, Saylor talks about the possible regulation of stablecoins and how it can impact the cryptocurrency space as a whole. If you want to know how Saylor thinks we go from $1 to $3 trillion market cap to 20 30 or even a hundred trillion dollars, then watch this video to the end, like the video, and drop all your comments in the appropriate section below. Let's get started. If you roll the clock back uh, six months, the president's working group put out a memo on stable coins. And when they put out the memo, they said, we'd like for FDIC institutions to issue stable coins. Now, now putting aside whether you agree with that or not, um, there's been a regulatory deadlock on Capitol Hill, because in the six months after they put out that memo saying they think that banks should issue stable coins, no bank issued a stable coin. And that's because the president's working group memo said, well, Congress should pass the law making this, making this clear. And uh, until then, we'll think of it this way. So the banks are waiting for Congress to pass the law. Congress didn't pass the law. And all the way up until last month, there's really no clear consensus to move on this. And we didn't expect any clear legislation or regulation before 2023 or 2024. So I think that um, if we just take the example of stable coins, that crypto crash and the UST crash has simultaneously educated the existing crypto market and all the investors. It's also introduced, uh, you know, the concept of risk. There are different. Not everything is equal, right? There are nineteen thousand five hundred things, you know, on coin market cap, but they're not all equal. So to say, well, this is risk free, or that is, you know, like they all have different flavors of risk. But how do you assess the risk? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that the industry is uh, getting more sophisticated. I think that uh, the regulators now have some pressure. Uh, the Secretary of the Treasury was in a congressional hearing with uh, Senator Toomey, and uh, he's been an advocate of some stablecoin uh, legislation. And he asked her, you think we need to get it done this year? And she said, yeah, I think we can and should get it done this year. So the consensus uh, among the regulators and the politicians is, yeah, we probably need to do this. Now, you could say, if you're the crypto anarchist. I, I, I hate regulators. I don't want them to do anything. Well, um, that's one way to view it. But as long as they don't do anything, the industry stays a trillion dollars, mm -hmm. one, two, three trillion dollars. When they do something, then you're going to see people like, let's say David Solomon was on CNBC uh, last week. He's the CEO of Goldman Sachs. Well, whatever Goldman Sachs thinks is probably what JP Morgan thinks and Citigroup thinks and Bank of America thinks and Wells Fargo thinks. So what he says is, um, yeah, we know the crypto economy is uh, here to stay. Uh, we can't custody it yet. We're afraid to custody these assets. <laughs> like we're not allowed. He, his actual words were, we're not allowed to. Right. And if I speak to CEOs of publicly traded companies and banks, like publicly traded banks, they'll say, our regulators won't let us. So you see the conundrum here, which is you could either stay in a regulatory gray zone where there's about 1% of the money 
one, you, you can be one or two percent of the, what you're going to be, and you can stay in the gray zone. Or <clears throat> you can create a clear public policy framework, and then you move into this compliant zone. And when Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan enter the space, they'll issue $500 billion of stable coin, mm -hmm. trillions of dollars. And so you'll go from $150 billion to 1.5 trillion. And when they start issuing uh, in that size, <clears throat> you'll see Amazon and Google and Microsoft using stable coin for international remittance and corporate mm -hmm. remittance. And then you'll see it get built into Apple Pay and Google Pay and Amazon as a payment method. Right. And, and then you will actually see billions of people using this stuff instead of hundreds of millions or tens of millions. According to Saylor, it is very important that regulators immediately set about defining what constitutes crypto security, commodity, or property. He explains that when these definitions are clearly stipulated, investors will know exactly what they are getting into and multinational financial institutions like JP Morgan, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, and others will feel safer getting more involved in the space. I think that the, um, <clears throat> that the consensus is the, re uh, the regulators need to provide more clarity on this issue of stable coins, and they also need to provide more clarity on the requirements for a, a crypto security. Right? It's, it's clear that Luna mm -hmm. was a crypto security. It, you know, it, it, the reason it's a security is there's an issuer and there's someone that can make decisions. So I think that um, this is going to accelerate that uh, that regulation <clears throat> it'll accelerate the regulation of the crypto securities and which are many of them are unregistered securities and there's no disclosure it'll accelerate the regulation of the exchanges it'll accelerate the regulation of the stable coin and in the near term there'll be a shakeout so you know some things when you look at them in the light of day you'll say for example what's a shakeout i decide i like circle better than i like ust that's a shakeout, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and it'll also create an on ramp for institutional intervention because you've got three hundred trillion dollars worth of money. You know, that's a hundred trillion dollars of bonds, a hundred trillion dollars of equities, ninety trillion dollars of currency, currency derivatives. You know, soft. You know, all sorts of forms of money. You've got other sorts of derivatives. They're all sitting out in the mainstream economy. And if you, you might have seen my tweet uh, of Ken Griffin. Ken mm -hmm. Griffin gave a speech uh, last week to Bloomberg. And they asked him about crypto. And he said, look, uh, the market deserves clarity from the SEC or the CFTC. What's a security? What's a commodity? And every day, ETFs publish their holdings. If you own it, and, and there's thousands of ETFs, people, ETFs are kind of like, they're, they're derivative securities of sorts. So, you know, if I can buy an ETF and every day they tell me what their holdings are, then I can get comfortable trading it, shorting it, going long it, holding it, et cetera. So his view was, why can't we see the same disclosure on something like a stable coin, right? We should get some periodic mm -hmm. disclosure. And then he ended his, his discussion with well, kind of like a degree of frustration, like it's overdue, like it's time to stop screwing around. And uh, if we have regulatory clarity, it's going to open the way for tier one firms like his own, like Citadel. But what he really means is Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citadel, all of Wall Street. It'll open the way for them to make markets do research, right? Mm -hmm. And to, to provide liquidity <clears throat> and provide liquidity eventually means loans and the, as well as hold on their balance sheets. Right. And they're not going to do it as long as they feel, as long as they don't know the difference between a commodity and a security and, and they don't actually understand the legal status of these things. So ultimately, what you've got is a trillion dollar industry that'll become a $10 trillion industry if we have cl regulatory clarity, and then it will become a 20 and then a 30. There's no reason it can't go from a trillion to a hundred trillion. 
-hmm. but you've got to work through these issues. There is no doubt that pseudo regulations will be beneficial to the crypto space. Sailor proposes a blanket regulation that covers the entirety of the space from exchanges to crypto securities and stablecoins, though he is certain that such measures will cause a shakeout that will cause the implosion of many crypto assets. He believes it is the best thing that can occur to the cryptocurrency industry. Do you agree with Sailor, or do you think regulations will cause more harm than good for the space? Let us know what you think in the comment section below, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.